Hello everyone and welcome. I am currently on holiday in India and I have with me a guest who has been living in the Jammu Kashmir Ladakh region for over 30 years. So I thought it was a good opportunity to ask him about his experience and the region and potential solutions to the crisis in the region at the moment. Hello and welcome. Thank you uh, and hello. I believe that terrorists target regions very specifically. So they target terrain, a particular region and particular people when they do this. Yes, you are right sir. The terrorists, they always target those houses where there are no working males or where there are old people and they have weak links or weak small children or families or maybe young girls. The aim of the terrorists is very clear. They want to exploit these people and exploit them, sleep with their women so that they know that these people are not going to speak up against them or are going to oppose them. They do this because they know that if these people at all make it public that they have gone and exploited their women folk, then in the bargain their daughters will not get married ever in the society because Jammu and Kashmir and all the Kashmiris are a close-knit family where everybody is equally connected with each other. So with the difficulty to expose terrorists because they do this activity in secret and they target people who are defenseless. Yes, they normally take care of guides. These guides are normally those people who are youth without any job. So these people, they know where all the security forces are guarding the passes. They are aware of the difficult terrain. They are aware of the nalas, rivers and places where security forces may not be that dominant. And so these guides help these people to sneak in. They charge terrorists a good handsome amount of money and take that as their livelihood. That is how terrorism prospers in Jammu and Kashmir. So I take what you are saying is that the terrorists are doing what they are doing mainly for money rather than another reason. Yes, the terrorists are doing it only and only for money. They have no other reason. They have no religious inclination. They in fact are nothing. They have no religious feelings at all. If they respected Islam, they would never be doing such a thing. Because they are helping these terrorists to come to lonely villages, villages which are near the border, villages which are far flung and they guide the terrorists to those villages and especially to those houses where they can exploit these particular humble men, these particular so called timid Kashmiris and they use them as their source where they could get free food, free women folk and free dominance whatever they want unopposed totally. So this is the game that is going on in Kashmir. Uh, is this terrorism happening throughout the whole year? Like does it happen uh, regularly throughout the whole year or is it more frequent at some times and other times? The terrorism, the infiltration, the infiltration part where the Pakistani soldiers or Pakistani posts across the border, they also help these terrorists to come and enter India. This happens mainly when, during the winter months when there is a lot of snowfall, when there is inclement weather, when the troops on ground, the Indian troops on ground cannot actually guard each and every place, each and every nala, each or every terrain and they take advantage of this inclement weather, they take advantage of the forest cover, they take advantage of the stretched terrain 
and then with the help of Pakistani posts and Pakistani soldiers, they are guided by the Indian guides who are basically looking for money and getting them inside the territory in India. So this is all supporting the case that the terrorists are doing what they are doing for money rather than purely political motives. Exactly. Which means that if you can improve the economy of the region and other factors, then you should also be able to decrease terrorism. Yes, that is exactly what I will give as one of the solutions to improve the economic conditions of the place so that in the long run, terrorists can be contained. Okay. Well, uh, firstly, the region itself is Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, but these are all very different regions. Is there any one region that's worse than the others for terrorism? Yes, if you see, Jammu has got a total different demographic divide. Jammu has got almost 42% Hindus and they do not support terrorism at all. Some of the districts of Jammu, they have the treacherous forest region where mostly Bakarwals reside. And these Bakarwals are actually nomads. They are the people who are grazing cattle. They are uneducated. They are only interested in their cattle. They are not interested in religion. They are not so religiously inclined towards Muslimism. And these have got nothing to do with terrorism. So if you take Jammu and Kashmir, the Jammu region has got very little terrorism. I would say not even 5 to 10 percent of terrorism is linked in Jammu. Now we come to the Ladakh region. Ladakh region is a very, very vast space. Here, Ladakh region starts from the Jojira Pass and stretches right up to the Pakistan and the Chinese border. So this part, which has got hardly any population, the Ladakhis have a different language. They have a different culture. They are not affected at all. They are all pro-India and they support India in all the moves. And this was the part which was actually neglected by the so-called state of Jammu and Kashmir. Now we come to the main Srinagar Valley or the Kashmir region which is the hub of terrorists. In this also there are almost 25 odd districts and in these districts there are just basically two or three notorious districts where the terrorism can be said to be thriving and these are Shopur next to the Baramulla and Shupiam which is on the western side. Now these two districts, almost 80% people are supporting terrorism in some form or the other. There are other districts also like Fulwama, Anantanag, Baramulla, the downtown in Srinagar. These are also supporters. But then the number of supporters here are very very less. They are not that much what these two three districts like Baramulla, Shupia and Shoporite called have. There are also pockets where there are Shia Muslims. These Shia Muslims do not support terrorists at all. So if you actually see the terrorism of so-called Kashmir is confined to a few districts only. The other places the people are timid. They are forced to give way to terrorism. They neither oppose terrorism nor support terrorism. And because of the timid nature of Kashmiris, the simple nature of Kashmiris, they easily get scared and they give way to terrorists and let them do whatever they want. So I believe that the issue of Kashmir being especially serious for terrorism is because the people themselves are easier to target. They are poor, uneducated and give in to the terrorists. And the region itself makes it hard for the terrorists to be discovered and to be tracked. Exactly. So if I put it wisely and tell you the history of Kashmir, the Kashmiris had at the time of independence, that is 1947-48, they were a very very small number of population. Over a period of time, education did not go to Kashmir. What went to Kashmir is only oppression and they continued multiplying the population. Since the education was not there, the means of containing population was not there. The villages had people, some of them four wives, some of them even more wives. And the number of children in remote villages was so much that population exploded in the region of Kashmir. The number of people increased where there were no means of livelihood. The only means of livelihood to Jammu and Kashmir are only three, 
that is the orchards, the fruits that they grow, the dry fruits, some carping weaving industry and of course tourism which was almost 35% of the means of livelihood of people of Kashmir. But over a period of time these livelihood got contained, the resources dwindled and can you imagine a place like Jammu and Kashmir where there is so much of water, so much of snowfall, they started facing water and having scarcity of water for their own fields. People started cutting forests, they started going up and up and in the bargain. Now there are a sizable amount of population who do not have any work and Jammu and Kashmir people are not the ones who go out, go down to Jammu or go down to Delhi as laborers. They want to continue their pace and they won't mind having a lesser number of resources with the bargain even though India claims to have been spending 18% of the GDP while Kashmir is only producing 1.8 or even lesser GDP to contribute to Indian overall GDP the Kashmiris have not got enough for them to support to, for them to get their livelihood so I feel the economic conditions of people basically jobs and first and foremost education needs to be addressed to bring back Jammu to the condition that it was even before 1947. Now I believe because money is an issue for the terrorists, they want to get money, uh, the terrorists are actually being funded from somewhere, they're being paid. So do you know where this money is coming from? If you actually see all the separatist leaders, they are only working for money. Very, very few are religiously inclined to improve the conditions of Muslims. If you see the source of money, the remote mosques, maybe in Delhi, maybe in Agra, maybe in Bihar, maybe down south in Kerala, these are the people where in the name of Jihad, the poor Muslims, the all the other Muslim, middle class Muslims, they are being asked to donate money and this money slowly trickles to the separatist leader who are working in Jammu and Kashmir. For simple reason why I say so is that these particular separatist leaders are not pushing their own children into the jihad, into the so-called terrorism. Their children are cozily studying abroad in other countries, America, Germany, France and they are not in India. But by using this money, they are funding their own luxurious lifestyle in Srinagar and also they are funding the so-called jihadis or separatists who are in dire need of a job and so invariably they fall prey because of money to these separatist leaders. Thank you. So I believe the situation is that the people who are paying for these terrorists to do their work are actually in India themselves. They're actually The money is not coming from outside India. The money is coming from India itself, from big cities. It India. is coming from India also. But we can't really say that all the money is coming from India alone. Some of the money may be coming from other countries. But we have already seen that the Arab world, the so-called Muslim countries are not supporting Pakistan or not supporting Kashmiris for jihad in Kashmir alone. Maybe in the year 1984-85 when it all started, initially some Muslim countries may have supported economically. But in the present context, I feel that most of the funding is done from within India rather than from abroad. Okay. And also because the terrorists are independent operators being paid, once their conditions have improved, and they are able to get money from other sources then they will not do the bidding of the people that are paying them for the terrorism and peace in the region will be restored. I agree with you. I am confident that if the funding sources of these terrorism are dried up and they do not get the funds it will be difficult for them to operate in Kashmir. Also if the local youth have jobs if they are economically stable, they are not going to fall prey for petty sums for doing terrorism. For example, it is a known fact that in Srinagar one could 
pay any boy, a young boy, a 500 rupee note for throwing stones. In 84, 85 and 90s, one could pay 500 rupees and tell a boy who had got nothing to do with terrorism to throw a hand grenade at the security forces. So these incidents I have actually seen on ground. So I say with conviction that should the economic condition of Kashmiris improve, they are going to fight terrorism tooth and nail. Okay. However, there should already be within Kashmir officials who are capable of stopping acts of violence, such as the police. Why do the police not police the area and provide security for people? The police is, as it is, you are well aware that Article 370 was there in Jammu and Kashmir. So the police was all controlled by the state government. The police and the local administration by virtue of corruption, they were the most involved in the terrorism. They always played a double game. They played one side with the forces and the second side, they always, the moment the forces were not in the scene, they always sided with the terrorists. So police actually should not be there. The local police should not be there. Now that Article 370 is removed, I am sure the administration and the centre will realise that they are going to replace the local police by a sizable number of force from outside the Srinagar Valley so that terrorism is contained and this local support which was there from some of the police personnel will get dwindled and the people will fight against terrorism with the police. Can you please tell me something more about corruption within the police too? Uh, for example, do the police take bribes? The police are there are three departments which are the most corrupt in the Srinagar Valley. The first of them is the police, the next is the forest and third is the PW department. Now India has been pumping in lot many funds for the welfare of Kashmiri people. They have been funding all the food grains for poor Kashmiri people. All the amenities, for example the kerosene, the electricity, everything is being supplied by the Indian government. In fact, most of the supplies which are there to sustain the Kashmir Valley are all coming from India for the welfare of Kashmiris. But how much of that reaches actually the Kashmiri people? It is not even a few percent, I won't even say five percent. The reason is that all this get swindled by the people who are there. The people sitting in the headquarters do not know the ground realities. In the month of winters, kerosene is sold for 300, 200 rupees a bottle where there is fire is and keeping themselves warm is one of the primary requirements in low temperatures. I have seen people buying food grains at exorbitant prices in winters and the administration not doing anything about it. Money comes but money comes only till the district headquarters and nothing trickles down below the district headquarters. So we have to devise a means where if India wishes to continue aid if the government is willing to give money for the welfare of people, it reaches down to the Kashmiri people. So aid is not reaching the Kashmiri people who actually need it due to corrupt officials and the money being used on things other than the poor people that it is intended to go to. Yes, the corruption in the country, if you say, is 10% then I would say corruption in Srinagar and the valley is 100%. The amount of corruption is tenfold than what is in other states. The corruption in Srinagar is the highest. So to expect any official to do anything for the local population was a myth till some years back. But I am sure with the centre now removing article 370, the situation will improve and they will set right all the methods by which the AIDS reaches down to people. I have a few methods which I suggest for doing that. If you see... Coming back to the police, would they simply be free not to take bribes if they chose or is there some reason why a policeman might have to keep taking the bribes? The policemen were taking bribes basically because the police people were low paid. They had taken it that by just joining the police they could make money to any amount that they want. 
they had the power and they could play the fiddle both with the terrorists as well as the security forces. Can you imagine just to get a policeman's recruitment, there were bribes amounting to 12 lakhs, 10 lakhs being paid to get the job because they knew that once they got the job, they will be able to recover that in the form of bribe again by intimidating people and taking bribes and then reaching their own motives, whatever they want. So even if a policeman decides he will want to be honest and not take bribes, he has no choice because he's got to pay back a large amount of money for his employment that was the subject of a bribe. Yes, treatment. that is there, but now since Article 370 is removed and police becomes a centre subject, it is up to centre to decide how do they want to reorganise the police force so that this corruption comes down to at least some level which is less. For example, in Delhi, if you see, police is not that corrupt. In other states also, police is not that corrupt. So why can't that be done for Srinagar? It shows that it is possible. It is possible. Yes. Now we come to the question of exactly how does one help the poor Kashmiris who at the present moment are getting aid from the Indian government. Okay, the methods that I suggest for the common Kashmiri people to be benefited by the Government of India Central Government schemes is that we all have known that something like Sarpanch, there are Nambadas in each village and Sorry, each village... Namada is a term that is meaning what? It is Nambada is an elected representative of the people. Like a village chief? It is like a village chief. He is the elected representative and these elections have been taking place off and on and they were suspended during a lot many times. Now the elected representative of the people who is representing just say 1000 people in some villages, 5000 people in some villages, this representative of the elected member of so called local government, he should be empowered, he should be given the direct subsidy into the government account by the district headquarter and this can be all decided by the district headquarter and subsequently it can be spent priority wise on the needs of the local people. The priority could be laid down but the fields that I can think of is the food and supplies, maybe kerosene for heating, electricity, road connection and so on, development employment works, is so many employ employment also included. Yeah. It could, so on, these are the fields where he could spend the money depending on the money that is available to him and depending on the priority that particular village has. Once the money comes to Nambadar or the local governing body, then all the local population will be aware as to what money has come to him and he will be answerable and the local people can always catch him. So the chances of corruption will be minimal. I wouldn't say it would be 100% out, but it could be minimum and this is how the situation of that population of Jammu and Kashmir will improve. Another method which is required to, for the direct a, subsidy. A, a brief question. You mentioned different numbers of people in the village. I suppose most of the villages are very small with no more than a thousand people. So everybody would know everybody else. Yes. Most of the villages, I would say the remote villages are only about 1000 to 5000 people. Subsequently, there are some villages which are more than 10,000, but that would not be more than 15-20%. So if the subsidy of the government comes directly to the village number Dar, he can be held accountable and he can put up a board, all the schemes and whatever the money and how he proposes to spend. And then the local governing body or the local people can question him and decide from themselves what is their part, priority or the development for which the government aid or the, the government scheme money which has come to them has to be spent. Right. So this is money that's given to the Namadad village chief in public with full disclosure. The villagers know about it. They know what's expected to be done with the money and there is no scope for corruption. Yes, that is exactly what I want to say. And the other issue is how to provide aid money to the villagers themselves. Is exactly. So the government of India had provided the cooking gas under the Ujula Yojana and so many families benefited it. They benefited it because of two reasons. Number one, they had the bank accounts and number two, they had the identity card which is the Aadhaar card which was linked with the bank account. Now this scheme of Aadhaar card and linking to bank accounts has not trickled 
in the valley since so many years even though the scheme exists on paper i am not saying that india completely everybody has aadhar card but in jammu and kashmir there may be a just very small percentage maybe 5 or 10% who got aadhar cards they had previously i cards issued by the state government but that i card was not benefiting the i card was being misappropriated by photographs now with the biometric system where the biometric figures cannot allow any duplication of aadhar card also a person even if he is educated he is able to take his aadhar card and show it to a bank he will be able to draw his money and open a bank account so mm-hmm. this needs to be done on priority basis and the government needs to issue directives so that all the residents of kashmir they have a bank account and they also have a aadhar card and the direct subsidy which is so called the government is promising the citizens can reach them directly and they can be feel as proud indians so there will then be no corrupt officials that can affect people being able to be helped by the indian government exactly when the direct transfer of money comes to their account they will be feel very much part of india they will feel part of the citizens of india and they will like thank the government for giving them the power of economic empowerment and buy at least the necessities which so much the central government wants them to have and the reason this hasn't happened before is partly because of article 370 which should not exactly. enable the indian government to do this exactly the article 370 was a big hurdle the government subsidies and schemes and the benefits of so many some 76 78 schemes which the government has come none of them have reached the common man and now these schemes these subsidies these grants have to reach the common man and the government should go all out to ensure that they reach the common man like they are reaching in other parts of the country but of course now it is possible to do it and your explanation provides the means to do it yes i think if we work on these lines they will not be very far when people will get the benefit of these schemes i believe that giving aid money to poor kashmiris is not a good long term solution but it is possible to improve the prosperity of the area what is the main source of income of this region i agree with you just giving or doling out money like this is not going to improve the conditions of kashmiris we have to improve totally the conditions of people of that place if you see the main source of income for kashmiris is growing fruits dry fruits and then of course there is the carpet industry and in some parts is tourism so all this is the main source of income and to improve this source of income the government of india sooner or later has to decide to set up a few industries a few plants there for them to set up for people of other parts of india to set up plants industry there food processing units can be set carping weaving industries can be set light machines or small manufacturing units can be set for this all to be done by the other people of other states of india incentives have to be provided huh? and also infrastructure has to be given loans have to be provided to these people and then i'm sure the sooner or later the prosperity the job conditions of kashmiris is going to improve what sort of fruits does this area have naturally naturally main fruit cold, that is grows uh, there apples, is the apples yeah. and of course there are the almonds the apricots the other fruits are there also babu goshas are there so all these fruits local fruits are there which are in great demand the plums are there they are in great demand outside most of the fruits which are grown in kashmir surprisingly finds its way for cities like bombay and delhi there are the main fruits for example the apples the best apples are exported to bombay and then they go to delhi and they all over india kashmiri apples are famous and everybody likes to have kashmiri apples the almonds and the akrot or apricots and the other plums your babu goshas 
they all are relished by each and every family down in the plains. But the excess that the Kashmiris have for their own use, and all that they're not selling fresh, they may dry for their own purposes, but there is no organized way of preserving it like in the Exactly, so the preservation sell. units can always be set up yes. at the place and not that the fruits are transported and then they are preserved at other places. The Kashmiris can wait for the right time. When the season comes, the price of apple is very, very low and the Kashmiri, because of lack of preservation facilities, has to just sell them and he does not get the exact amount of money that she should be getting. And of course, because the apples are such high quality, this is an industry just waiting to be developed. Exactly. So associated with apple are other industries, the jam industry is there, the other, so yes. many industries which are, you know, byproducts of apple, the juice, apple juice industry is also there, yes. packaging is there. So all these industries can come so, up at the appropriate places. I forgot to mention about the cherries, the Kashmiri cherries. Oh, are, right. Yeah, cherries too. Cherries, cherries are too. normally quite expensive. Yes. yes. Mm. So they are the ones which are most liked by people in the plains. So what is currently happening to the apple farmers? Do they have an easy time of farming? No, the products? apple farmers, if actually if you go to the remote villages, the ground level, the apple farmers, though they are owning the farms, but they do not have even enough money to buy the pesticides and manure for growing the apple trees. The apple trees have to be pruned when the snow falls or when the snow is just beginning to fall and they borrow all this money from people and then they grow the apples. Even before the leaves have come on the trees or even the apples have shown on the trees, the saukar who is lending the money, the money lender takes all their earnings. He just decides on a sum and tells them that he is going to pay only the subsistence allowance to the landowners and he pays only when the produce is sold. And what he does is he just collects money and auctions all these apple to people who are coming down from Jammu, Delhi, Bombay and the orchards once the fruit is laden on the entire this thing is taken away by there. So actual farmer gets almost nothing of the produce that is growing on the farm. He is borrowing money, he is always in the borrowing circle. So I am sure with the farmer loans, with the correct mechanism, the central government will realize that the farmer should get adequate money for whatever he is producing rather than all these middlemen who are actually exploiting the poor farmers. Right, I understand. If the region can be more profitable and if it can be safer, then there will also be more tourists that will come in. Exactly. Mm. The moment the terrorism is contained, the moment there is everywhere peace is there, tourists will be more than willing to come to Kashmir. And of course we can set up hotels, resorts, so many activities can be set up. The, there is a big lake, Buller Lake, organized water sports can be there. There can be get-togethers, there can be picnics, even migratory birds come to Srinagar and there can be a source for tourists to come and watch the natural beauty. Kashmir is paradise, they say, and it has to remain a paradise. Any tourist, not only from India, abroad also, they die to come and see the paradise on earth. Even the animals, the migratory birds, there are, you know, some wildlife. The snow tiger is only found in Kashmir. The ibex is only found in Ladakh. So all these, you know, animals, they will be a treat to watch for people who come from outside and treat to see what the natural surroundings of Kashmir. The ibex is a very, very beautiful animal and they've got typical horns uh, where, you know, some hair are also growing and the color is absolutely white and they are the species which it is a very lucky charm for them. Uh, there are also Sufi places. Yes, there, yes. There are a lot of Sufism. There are people, there are Pagambas and their Pagambas and Sufis don't have any religion. They were acceptable both to Hindus and Muslims. And there are so many hermits where Sufism is prevalent and they want to interact with people. In fact, tourists want to go and visit these Sufi saints and learn a lot from them, learn their culture and know about their past, know about their traditions, but terrorism is preventing everything. So of course, if the terrorism is reduced greatly, the tourists will come in and see all these wonderful exactly. things. Exactly, they will visit all mm. the Sufi shrines of Srinagar. 
not only in Srinagar, outside Srinagar, there are a lot of shrines, a lot of beautiful places. We call it Peer Baba Ki Darga. So the moment they develop to the local areas, to the remote places, people will find it more easier to connect themselves with the other parts of Kashmir, Jammu and the other countries. Another issue for the area would be education because the reason the terrorists are targeting a lot of the people is because they are poor and uneducated. Yes, so, so I want to tell you that the, unlike the other misnorma that normal people have, that Jammu and Kashmir has only one Urdu as their language or Kashmir as their language, there are more than 18 to 20 various dialects which are prevalent. So even a person like me who knows Kashmiri has to go to villages where the local Kashmiri people have to translate the dialect and come there. The students, the children of Kashmir, they want to get educated. There is a general feeling that education can really bring improvement to the life of these people. But there are no good teachers, there are no institutions, there are no means to get educated and I am sure the government will do something about it so that some experienced teachers from other parts of the country are come there. The people should not be educated only with Hindi but there is a lot of craze of learning English so I am sure some of the English schools other than Srinagar can come up in villages, in remote areas, in districts where there are no schools. But I believe that people really want to learn. It's not an issue that people aren't interested yes, in. Yes, people are very much interested mm. in learning languages. People are very much interested in learning sciences. They are very much interested in learning different kind of vocational art, vocational training also. But the facilities do not exist. So the government of India can also think of providing them some sort of reservation in other colleges in other parts of country also the basic education can be done in the valley in parts of Jammu where terrorism is there English is more uh, liked by people there that is what I found so Hindi being the link language to all their states should also be there it can be a go a long way in improving the Kashmiri's condition and also associating them the rest of India. It's very easy to mm -hmm. teach a young child yes. and to teach an older person. Yes. People in Kashmir are receiving religious instruction, isn't that correct? That's correct. But is the religious instruction that they're receiving reliable? No, it is not reliable because the religious sermons that they are being told are only by hearsay. They are not from the verses of Quran. So if education comes, and they are educated, they will themselves realize that the religious instructions and the religious sermons that are being delivered to them by the Malvis in the remote villages are nowhere written in the Quran. They are their own interpretation. So where there is misinformation, it is not because people are deliberately uh, misinforming people on religious matters, it is because they can't because read. Because of the education, right. yes. Because so they just is. have to learn to read. Yes, they are doing it because of lack of education. And in making the region safer, what is happening to the soldiers? Are the soldiers able to guard the borders normally? The soldiers are guarding the borders, but soldiers are always at the receiving end. They are at the receiving end because they are targeting their own people. And within the crowd, there is only one lone terrorist. There could be a crowd of thousand people. There could be a crowd of hundred people. And out of that, to find out that one lone miscreant or the terrorists it becomes very difficult. So it is for the security forces to realize that they are always at the receiving end. It is for the common man to understand the security forces are always at the receiving end. They do not have choice. Are they there to kill their own people? No, they are not. So the soldiers should not be hunting for terrorists and they shouldn't be doing the job of the police. They should be sent to the borders and guarding the borders and the policing should be done better than it has been. Exactly. So the police should do their job. If the police was doing their job in the towns and cities and villages where they would have not allowed terrorism to grow, army would have never been sent to villages, towns and all these places. So army is being actually given an additional task, a task which is actually not theirs. It is the task of the police. Army's job is to guard the borders. Right, I understand. So when terrorism can be reduced because poverty in the region is less and corruption is less 
and policing and protection has been improved, then the entire region should be better. Yes, the region will be better and the army will go back to the borders. Army has got no role to play in the towns and cities. So what should be done, do you think, when the region improves? Do you think there would be a way of letting people know that this is not the same as it used to be? Yes, so to improve the region, I suggest a novice method. It is the people themselves who have to protect themselves. In some district like Doda and Kishwar, it has been tried out. We have taken all the young educated men who understand and who are against terrorism. They have been armed with the armed licensed weapons. So in every district, every village, every place where there are educated people and with the ideology that terrorists are coming and targeting them because they are not having anything to protect themselves, they will be able to protect themselves. And this has worked in Doda and Kishwar. It can work in many other districts also. May not be immediately in districts like Baramulla, Shupia and Shopur, but it is bound to give the local people their own protection and they can themselves in times of need oppose the terrorists if they find and they agree that the terrorists are not doing the right thing. But the local people of course would have to be trained how to use firearms correctly and being given licensed firearms and so on that can be tracked. People don't require very much training for using of firearms, the licensed weapons. They do require training, I'm not denying that. But all the young able bodied men in Srinagar and Valley and also the outskirts of Jammu, they want to have a sense of pride, a sense of protection, a sense of well-being and they actually want to possess the weapons so that in times of need they can safeguard their sisters, their mothers and the women folk and family. Of course, and they would have to be sure that they can follow a procedure to use a weapon that they would fire a warning shot first for That's example. And they can there. fire like this. Yes. So the fire discipline has to be taught and these people will be trained by maybe the military people or the CRPF or the other forces who will teach them how to maintain the fire discipline which is very much important. So the security that you envisage for the region should not just be the police and the soldiers who guard the borders but also responsible citizens who would be taught how to use weapons properly and given license. Yes, yes, I, uh, that is exactly what I mean. And so once this region has become more prosperous and safer, it is important to announce that to the world, to let other people see, so that people should be able to spread the news. Yes, we would like other people from other parts of the country to come. And as it is, the tourism will have a boost. Kashmir, 35% jobs is tourism. So we would like people from other parts of the country to come and visit Kashmir and see for themselves. And if possible, we become a part of the new prosperity of Kashmir. And similarly, I would also suggest one more thing that people from Kashmir should be given a chance to visit the rest of India. Just like we are sponsoring at the central government and some of the state governments that we are sponsoring old people to go on a pilgrimage. And half of this pilgrimage, whether it is Hajj or you know visiting the Char Dham Yatra, is subsidized by the government. The subsidized buses are there. We are spending so much of money. So I suggest that to immediately reduce the problem and to let the Kashmiri be prop people understand India better, we should allow Kashmiri buses, pilgrimage tours down to South Kerala, to Bombay, to Agra, to Delhi, to Taj Mahal, to Lucknow, to all the places of their interest and show them what is the condition of India. Then and only then they will understand and be part of India. The criteria to get these people in this should be the economic backwardness and of course the low education level. We should not be sponsoring same people or the rich people or the middle class people again and again because they would have already seen India. It is only the people who do not have the means to see the other part of country. I have talked to people, there are some people who have never seen a rail, who have never seen a ship, Trail. who have never seen mm. a mall, or never seen a theatre. And it is for these people that they should come and see India and experience India. And of course this would improve national pride in India and people rather than wanting to be independent would 
feel proud of India and yes, be Indian. Yes, Kashmiri are our people. Yeah. Kashmir belongs to India and Kashmiri are Indians. So they have to see what their country looks like. Right. And of course, there's a lot for India to gain because 18% of gross domestic product GDP is being spent on the region. Instead, it could be profitable and with so much money being spent, then surely poor and uneducated Indians can be shown on the yes. side. All the successive governments since 1947 have spent crore and crores of rupees. With the result what? We have not achieved any upliftment of the local Kashmiri people and that needs to be done. And once more people are educated, they would be sought after for employment, isn't it? Because they would be... Exactly. Uh, so it is, it is for the other people, other Indians, to come and set up industries, set up employment houses for the Kashmiris to join in Kashmir and also so also for Kashmiris to join at the other places. See, listen, when I was talking to some of the nationalist people or some of the people who are staying in other parts of India, they told me that Kashmir Hamara hai. Kashmir belongs to us. I can understand the nationalist feeling. I am proud of them. But what about Kashmiris? Kashmir is yours, but Kashmiris are also yours. So, I would suggest, it is just a suggestion for the government to maybe take it or not take it. I would suggest that the so-called nationalist people, the so-called socialist people, the so-called people who always thump their voices and say Kashmir Hamara and will not let any other country take it should be given a memorandum, should be given a suggestion that if you really want welfare for Kashmiris, please employ in your office at least two Kashmiris so that in whatever capacity, whether you want to train them, educate them and then employ them or in whatever capacity, in whatever little bit, so that these Kashmiris feel part of you, they grow with you. Presently, when a Kashmiri goes out to any state, whether he goes out to Delhi, he is alienated. Yes. He is taken it. He may not have anything to do with terrorism. He may be a person who is really born and brought up in Kashmir and who has the feeling of nationalism. But if he comes to Delhi, the moment people come to know that he belongs to the valley, they think think that they doubt his integrity and they start thinking that whether he actually belongs to India. So, to change the mindset, to make Kashmiris part and parcel of India and give them the rightful place that a citizen of India belongs, we should suggest to all the MP, MLAs across all the states to at least employ a few Kashmiris, maybe two or three and it is for them to prove that they are nationalists and they actually mean that Kashmir Hamara hai. So, employing Kashmiris in these positions all over India, including in the region of Jammu Kashmir Ladakh itself, would mean that there would be greater trust in Kashmiris, that they would be sought after. Trust Kashmiris. Yes. And the Kashmiris will trust you. Yes. It is both ways. The trust is mutual. With greater prosperity in the area too, it would also allow trade with neighbours like Pakistan. So that might indirectly yes, improve yes, relations yes. as well. Yes, we have always advocated that Pakistan is a neighbour. There are some items which are profitable to be imported from Pakistan because they grow very near to Pakistan borders. And if we have to bring those items all the way from Kerala or Mumbai or Delhi, the transportation costs are phenomenal. So Kashmir should gets a few items from Pakistan, we have been always getting maybe rock salt, maybe a few type of eatables, maybe onions, all these items which grow abundantly in Pakistan, we can always import them for the use of Kashmiris. Similarly, Pakistan can also import a few items that we are always surplus with and it works out economically for them. Right. This sounds very good. Yeah. So the key to being able to do all these things is really to empower the local people. The local people are being ignored so far, but empowering them can change this region. Exactly. Empowering them and the trust. We have to have faith in them and they have to faith in the country. And they have to feel as proud citizens. And of course the removal of Article 370 now allows India to do just that. Exactly. This can also be applied to other areas as well, isn't it, where there are several countries administering a particular region, like Balochistan. 
Yes, I am saying that we are talking of Kashmir. We talk of Kashmir, we call Kashmir as one part. Pakistanis call it the India occupied Kashmir and we call the Pak occupied Kashmir while the Pakistani call it the Azad Kashmir. So, if Kashmir improves and Kashmir is shown to the world that see the development in Kashmir that has taken place, I am sure that Pakistan will take precedence from India and will try and improve the conditions of the Kashmir part which is with them and also in the Balochistan area where they are facing a lot of problems. Right. So, thank you very much for discussing all these things so thoroughly and so clearly. I just wish to summarize in my own words what I think you regard as most important to make sure that I understand this well. So firstly, that it is difficult to address terrorism directly. It's better to address it indirectly and to avoid purely political strategies. So one should address corruption at the level of officials and police and businesses and one should start by assisting villagers and elected village chiefs financially with full transparency with public disclosure. One should improve education also giving people a common language or languages. One should protect the people and increase safety. One should build up the economy encouraging entrepreneurship new businesses and industries and of course one should employ more Kashmiris because then people will trust Kashmiris and it works the other way too for the Kashmiris. Letting people see India will strengthen national pride and it makes sense to subsidize travel for the poor and the uneducated. Finally, if one can promote all the positive changes via people who are socially active and spread news, then the benefits can also spread to other regions in Pakistan as well. And one does not need to change borders or restrict their freedom. Peace within the region is promoted and spreads to the neighbors as well. And then this whole region can be safer, more profitable, and serve to spread the good reputation of India. Is this what you want to say? Exactly. I want to share two more things. Killing of terrorists and eliminating them is required. But this is only a short-term solution to the problem. You kill 10 terrorists, 10 more come. People in the news tell me that some of the terrorists have got 6 hours life, some have got 6 days, some have got 6 months and that's the maximum life for a terrorist. But eliminating terrorists is a solution but it is a very short term solution. It is a narrow minded solution. It should be done. I am not saying it should not be done. But over a period of time we have to really address the issue to the people of Kashmir, to the people of Srinagar, to the people of Jammu and the people of Ladakh. We have to get them into the folds of India and main aim should only be the people of Kashmir and their progress. Political aims should not overpower the other aims. As it is, I firmly believe that once United Nations organization came in being on 24th October 1945, there is no nation which can have political adventurism. When I say political adventurism is that the requirement or the need or the desire to gain more territory. People may say in India that we want Azad Kashmir as well. People may say in Pakistan we want India occupied Kashmir. But this is all a dream which never will be fulfilled of either the side. The borders, whatever has been once confronted or unconfirmed will remain as such. And it is very little or it is very next impossible that we will be able to change the borders. So, India and Pakistan both should now focus on improving the conditions of people, both in India and both in Pakistan. If need be, Pakistan can always, I am sure the government of India is magnanimous enough to allow them to come and see for themselves how in Kashmir the Kashmiris have progressed so well and the delegation can be taken to other people. Similarly, Indian delegation should be allowed by Pakistani to visit Ajaz Kashmir and other areas of Baluchistan 
so that they can give their suggestions to improve the conditions of people there. Here, there are no political compulsions or no political gains or this whole exercise is aimed to only for the welfare of people who are part of Kashmir. Thank you. But what you also suggest is that the approach to terrorism needs a very deep understanding that the issue of poverty and so on is and lack of education is behind a lot of the terrorism so that it's one gets further in understanding terrorism itself and the terrorists than simply not thinking about it and treating it in a very I agree way. with you the need to address terrorism everybody is countering terrorism though terrorism is a one form of injustice and it is a parasite to the society where society suffers because of one individual who takes up arms and who is bent upon or hell bent upon eliminating the society. But we have to also undermine as citizens of India the psych, the reasons why a particular person has taken up terrorism. There are very few terrorists who are actually religiously motivated. But there are 80% or 90% terrorists who are doing it because they are economically weak or they are poor. Just because they are not able to find a livelihood or just because they are not able to sustain themselves, they take up terrorism. Very few religious motivated terrorists are there. So we have to address the issue right at the root cause. Eliminating terrorists is one of the ways, but that is not the only way. The way is that we have to get in the mindset of people and motivate them to give up terrorism. That is more important. Thank you very much for your time, sir. I hope this video has been of interest to everyone. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye.